Hello everybody, my name is Luke Mar, and this is Hotla Mode and today on Hotla Mode we are coming to you with a reaction video that is all about the collectors of fashion from all over the world. It is a breakdown of at least this episode, a 70 piece Comme des Garçons collection that is from none other than the fashion editor, Shell Ellie. Essentially it, it's going to break down some of the really really cool pieces that she owns, that she's bought, that she's worn. Shell Ellie is very cool, very fun very iconic. If you don't know, from the Garçons means like the boys. It is a brand designed by none other than Rei Kawakubo, one of the early pioneers of Japanese fashion throughout the Western world. She is the founder of Comme des Garçons, which is a more high-end luxury, abstract, architectural, forward-thinking, avant-garde brand. But then also you have like Comme des Garçons Play, which is, you know, the little heart on the Converse sneaker. Then you have Dover Street Market, which is a boutique with multiple locations all around the world that essentially just kind of does its own thing, does whatever it wants, it sells Gucci, it sells Supreme, it sells everything. That's Ray. She's a vibe. So without further ado, let's get into this. I've been collecting since 1992 and I think I have over 70 pieces. Holy shit. First things first, I don't even know what these would cost. Like a lot of these are very much so runway pieces. A lot of the times I don't even think they really go into production. Most of the time when you see them, it's not like on a rack in a Comme des Garçons store, in a Dover Street Market. They're usually like hung up on mannequins and, and nobody's like, I'm gonna try this on. Or at least I've never seen it. Usually there are much more, much more commercial pieces, you know, in the stores. They're not that much more commercial, but they're definitely not as sort of abstract and sculpt as the pieces that Shell has here. Please don't tell my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Vogue, I'm Michelle Ali. I'm devoted oh to collecting. She's also wearing like a beautiful jacket. The way that that jacket is just cut, so hot, so sexy. And then from it, we have a little tattooage reference, which in reality, everybody's like, Gucci, it's Gucci. I discovered recently, it's actually Isamiyake. So there's an Issey Miyake video coming. It's, you know me, I just take forever to do stuff like that, but it's actually coming. Shout out to Issey Miyake, revolutionary. He did it in 1971. So the girls are like, Gautier, Gautier. And it's like, listen, love Gautier. But Issey did it first. These are more than clothes. These are emotions. The head feelings. This is a story over the last 25 years oh, that I'm shit. lucky to be able to be telling through years. my clothes. So my clothes are my weapon. They are my voice. And the coolest thing about Michelle Ali, she wears these. Like she'll go to shows during Paris Fashion Week and stuff. And I think in her everyday life, she'll wear these pieces. They're not just like sitting in a closet and they never really get worn. Like she wears the shit out of them which I think makes it even better. She doesn't say much, but then she's giving you a phone. The shoe on the headpiece, very Elsa Scaparelli original reference. This is the brilliant part about Ray. She's a mysterious designer. She you is. don't know so much about her, mm -hmm. but her work speaks for herself. And I love the fact that she's also been at the head of her design from the beginning and still is. So for me, that's yeah. a very significant point. And I love the fact that also she's a woman. She owns her own company, mm -hmm. which is very rare in fashion to find still one person who has been from the very beginning to now. It's true. A lot of the times these big fashion companies are owned by conglomerates or get bought out by the makeup and beauty fragrance companies that make their perfumes and stuff like that. With Ray, it's like she makes a lot of money on these clothes. She makes a lot of money on perfume and products and all that sort of stuff, but she also very much so is involved in the process of picking other designers for things like the street market. She meets a lot of the designers that she takes on and then her and her husband Adrian Joff who is the CEO of the company, they like nurture these people as well. So she's very involved in all these different aspects. So I'm going to take you to my atelier where my girl- Oh my god, the leather harness piece is crazy. Holy shit. I wonder if she puts like my girls, which I love blankets and each on those one windows. Of them, she has a particular story. So oh, the very that. first purchase oh. of come. It's incredible. This is the, the mother wow. of all pieces. It has a lot of reference to me. It was the first designer piece I owned. I had no money when I wow. bought it, but I had done a campaign uh, modeling. And the first thing I thought I would do is invest into a piece. And after this, it was the dice has fallen. 
What's brilliant about wow. this piece is when she combined a dress with a man's suit. So this whole idea of gender mm -hmm. combining was already happening in 1992. I think, honestly, with Ray, she started showing in the 80s, and it always was very much so forward-thinking and groundbreaking. I believe that her and Yoji Yamamoto were both called, or at least their clients were called the Crows because they dressed in all black, which was not really seen as like a super chic thing to do, especially in somewhere like Paris. When I first bought the piece, I never imagined that it would take it's me to this suit. point of having a collection. It was always my wardrobe. Sorry. Because I wear my clothes. I wear. Oh, it's a jumpsuit. So bought with emotions. I didn't buy with an investment idea behind it. I bought it because I actually wanted to wear the piece. It wasn't until the museum says it was a collection that I realized, oh, I do have a collection. Oh my God, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> She's so cool. Wait, the door hanger. Okay, you know why this is everything? Right. Right, doorknob, handle, hooks, everything that is used to hang your coat, and she makes a vest out of this. I mean, this piece is so chic. It's Every time I wear it, it brings smiles to people's faces. Of course, it looks ridiculous to a lot of people, and I get that. Sometimes I go through the store and I'm like, it does look ridiculous. But it's much more about abstraction, differing thought, a way to put together clothing that is not sort of conventional. And I appreciate that. I met Ray in distress. I'll tell you a little story. Wow. I bought it, and then um, when the Met Ball was going to happen, I thought I was going to get a ticket. I'm not mad. She didn't get a ticket? Anna, you dickhead. Sorry, not to call Anna a dickhead, but like, she, that's a dickhead move. Did she not get a ticket? So I never wore the dress. Oh. And the last collection before lockdown, I drove the dress. She sat in front of my car because she doesn't feel anything. I always drive my clothes to Paris because they don't fit. I can't carry them on the flight. I can't carry anything. So I drove the dress. I had taken another piece to wear that day for the comp show. I tried it on and then I said, no, 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 no. I think I'm going to wear this dress. So I decided to wear the dress and I decided to wear it with the mask because I also didn't want to be visible even though I wouldn't be visible. She's so cool. Like, see, isn't she so cool? That's so cool. Just going back to the Met, considering I just called Anna Winter a dickhead, there was a Met exhibition. It was called Rei Kawakumo, Comme des Garçons. It was put on. It was actually very, very cool. It had a lot of pieces. It explained so, so much about Rei's sort of process, the way that she works, who she is, and she pretty much, like, dictated everything. I think she only gave Andrew Bolton, like, two years or a year before the actual exhibition, and she was like, yeah, I'll do it. And the thing is about exhibitions like that, it usually takes, like, five years for them to sort of come together so she was like i'll do this now and everybody's like okay can we push back a little bit i'm pretty positive and she was like no no no, it's like now or no and they're like okay and so they did it that sucks though she should have been invited she's like the muse as i got to the come show adrian Joff, which is the husband of ray said would you like to meet ray and i was like i bought the dress to meet her and then randomly i met that's her that's crazy she's never even met her where she hadn't met her. And it was so much more personal for me because I did not meet her. I met her at her own show backstage. She was, I had a beautiful smile because she saw me in the dress. I had a beautiful smile because I, I was so honored to meet her in the dress that I chose to meet her in the dress. Aw, cuties, love that. Also, I'm pretty positive they say that Ray doesn't speak English, but I'm pretty positive I've also heard that she does speak English. She just like chooses not to. She's like, no, 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 I don't speak it. But she does. You can't create an order within the wardrobe because like I said, they're all different emotions. It's like creating my emotion is order. It's almost impossible. I would never be able to do that. <laughs> Holy shit. There's so much of that. She's so cool. Michelle, she so cool. Twice. Once was my birthday and once was during Couture Paris Fashion Week. It reminds me of being like a lobster. <laughs> me too. I remember when I was a lobster as well. Aren't you happy to look at this outfit? This is the most <gasps> precious part of this outfit, is the back. Yeah, Cheeky. it's so hot precious with a skirt. Cute. It's so me, cool. I think for me, it was a matter of searching for something different while living in New York City. And at the time, there was a lot of Japanese and European brand in the 90s when I lived in New York. So downtown was my, you know, my, my area. And I was discovering the, the brands. I always came every day downtown and spent hours and hours and hours. And I really was searching for something outside of myself. Come on! 
I need to kill them. If you see bugs, please be aware because uh, they can actually be very detrimental to this uh, clothing. Yeah, that's the worst thing. Like moths, the worst. Any kind of bugs, really. But like moths hate moths, despise. Like I get what they're there for. I understand in an environmental context. I don't want them eradicated from the world. I just would like them personally to be eradicated from the closet where I keep all my shit. Not to be like, I have a bunch of stuff, but like I have collected, I've kind of stopped recently because I moved. So it's kind of, you know, clamped down on the buying habit, but I have old Balenciaga. I actually have, a, I think I have like three Balenciaga old couture pieces. I have quite a bit of Alexander McQueen. I have some cute stuff. Gucci, you've seen some of it. Some of it I can't wear because I can't fit some of it, but I understand the struggle of like keep the bugs out and also with stuff like this you have to keep it in like a certain climate a certain temperature because again fabric textile it's not a living breathing thing but it's made from natural materials so in reality unless it is kept perfectly it can deteriorate over time light can affect it moisture can affect it heat cold all can affect it so i keep my girls up here because it's a controlled atmosphere mm -hmm. i have to madame antoinette so cool <laughs> The shoulders the Marie Antoinette. In, in the den of the painted right. denim. This is a tableau, darling. This is tableau. It's a painting. <gasps> the skirt. I, the I really feel oh, like this could be shit. really Queen Elizabeth or Marie Antoinette. In this she really could. <laughs> she really and could. The and the work of the oh coat God. from the inside is also amazing. So you can actually wear it inside out and then look at the playfulness of the which you don't see when you take off the coat. The who? The donut skirt. Oh. The donut skirt. Who knew? That I needed that in my This life. is another piece of know what the last hell men's is. collection in combination with the artist called Will Cole. When I saw this on the runway, I was like, ah, oh, he finally solved what I'm looking for in a headpiece is to have my shoe on my head. It was actually stuck in custom because they didn't believe me it was a hat. And I kept saying, it is a hat. And he says, well, it's a lot of shoes together. So they thought I was sneaking shoes <laughs> into the country without wanting to pay tax on That's it. Funny. And then I had to send them a picture of the runway show with the guys wearing that and then they released it. <laughs> That's the funny thing about customs is like, if you're somebody that works in fashion, people are like transporting clothes and stuff all around the world if customs is like oh that's you're like not paying tax on that or you're cheating or blah 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 they'll put you on a list it's not like a no-fly list it's a check their goddamn bags every single time list and they'll put you on it they will i've heard about it i don't want to experience it i declare everything listen you know what they said born death taxes <sighs> I don't want to have to unpack my bags, you know what I mean? Not that I'm buying a shit ton of stuff anyway when I'm traveling. That's what they told me. This is not oh a God. hat, Mrs. Murray. And I was like, oh, it is. Well, oh, one second. I have to find the right way to wear it. Oh, my God. Right? She's amazing, this and I'm obsessed with her. Badass, kick-ass shoe. When you're in the city, no one plays with you. I love this shoe because I have to always take it off at the airport because it rings all the time. <laughs> A Victorian Wolf shoe with a cum oh, cap. Cool. It changes completely the shoe. I love. Look at the drawing. Isn't that precious? She's I mean, amazing. I don't have She's that like so many of a big That's shoe, so cool. shoe collection. But of course, you know she doesn't really make shoes. This happened in 2014, fall winter. And the owner who sold oh. it to me, he says, I don't want any pieces to be stored away. And I don't want pieces to be thrown on the secondary market. And I Fair. said to her, don't worry, I won't throw on the secondary market. I would wear it and it definitely would have the right home. So, but the funny thing is I haven't got a box for it because you cannot have it on the mannequin. Even storing it is a little bit tricky. I mean, this is phenomenal. I mean, you'll be so happy to look at this piece. It's a treat. Oh, oh my god. Divine happiness. It's That's like a tubular okay, skirt. Just have coffee in my kitchen like today. just the, the textile development of that. It's a dress. <laughs> I'm so excited. And then look, you don't have an arm. This goes on your shoulder. And the oh idea god. of this coming out is just this explosion of expression. <laughs> so crazy and I love There's that. something needed to come out. It's like a birth of creation. creation. We need somebody to wear stuff so like this, you know what I mean? Like keep so things interesting. So I have to get a box for it. So that's in here. I see it every stop when come stops. I think no one can overtake her company. But I will continue to oh. search for the pieces that I 
wasn't aware of. There, I mean, there are some amazing pieces. I don't know. I don't think I have enough space, to be honest. That's a real question. I don't have enough space to store everything. I have to ask my bank for a loan, I think. I'm not joking. There should be a loan for fashion, to be honest. I have to talk to my banker. Agree. That was awesome. I love that. So that is the 70 piece comb collection. I mean, listen, people, that, that shit was fire. I love that. Michelle Ali is super cool, super amazing, super wonderful. She's a star. Would die for her. I would die for that collection. It's super awesome. I love that somebody's actually like buying these pieces because oftentimes that's not the case or it's just for runway. It's not usually produced. It's really cool to see that somebody really like loves and cares and wears those clothes. So please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if you're like, this is the Hunger Games. Sure. Fair. If you don't think it is, or you think it is, but it's still cool, also comment that. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and TTY. Ciao.